Hey guys, welcome to the Think Time show. This is Christine Wilson, licensed professional counselor and co-founder of Think Time. And tonight we have a wonderful special guest, Dr. Aaron Bader. And wonderful people who are joining us today. And I'm so glad you guys are all here in this room with us. And we're going to be discussing a topic that is so near and dear to my heart. And I found um, just a kindred spirit along the way about a year and a half ago. Um, Dr. Bader and I were introduced. And it turns out that a lot of our research and um, heart and passion really align in this one area. So um, Dr. Bader, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Christine. I'm so excited to be here with you and excited to share um, everything that God's been showing me and what I've been learning on this journey of life. So thank you. Absolutely. I'm going to do the long, the long version of all of your credentials that are just wonderful. Um, Dr. Bader is a creative life coach, a life and leadership coach, and she loves to help people to discover the joy um, living a life of significance and freedom. And she does this through the development of developing each person's strengths and their unique strengths. Erin knows what it's like to experience burnout. You know what it's like. And you also know how to discover joy through out of the box solutions, creativity, and gratitude. It is your hope that during this time, as we discuss the creative presence that you're able to engage with the stories and you're able to understand your own mindsets. You can answer the thought provoking questions she's going to bring up today and that you will develop strategies to have a clearer focus, decrease your stress and discover the ability to be fully present in your relationships. So that sounds like a lot of wonderful goodness. I'm so excited about it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bader is a certified life coach from Delight University and is becoming certified with International Coach Federation. And in your private life, you are a lifelong learner enjoying quilting, traveling, and outside activities with friends and family. And you reside in Santa Paula, California with your husband, David, and you guys have been married 31 years. That's amazing. So you've got a newly married daughter, which I love this. We were talking about this podcast and it was like, well, you know, I'm finishing my dissertation and... <laughs> helping my daughter get married. So, I mean, you know, life is so full. Um, but yeah, so you are um, just such a gift and thank you for being here tonight, Dr. Bader. Um, would you mind, you know, I just said a lot about you, but would you, it, it, what did I leave out? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey into becoming Dr. Bader who does creative presence? Well, and I'll just tell you just a little bit about um, my background. So I've been a nurse for 30 plus years at this point in time. Yeah. And I also am a licensed marriage and family therapist. Okay. So that transition came, um, I had a, a significant life event and I will share with you, it's a part of my story, um, which caused me to go back to school. We experienced the life and death of our son. It was a, a short time period. And through that, I just needed to step away from nursing and I've always wanted to go back to school. And so I did. And it was a, a healing time as I then became a licensed marriage and family therapist. So lots of healing during that time. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started getting introduced to the neuroscience. Um, so that's a little bit of my history and I might be getting ahead of myself, but that my world changed during yeah. that time. And it's so and then I had the opportunity just to do something different. That's good. So this doesn't come from just, you know, a weekend interest in neuroscience. This is something that has some deep roots in your personal life. And you've, sounds like you've deeply felt um, what you're going to share with us today. It comes from a place of deep within and finding some answers. Is that fair to say? Very fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. And um, with the neuroscience, when I was doing some research, I didn't realize that it only began the study of the brain in the 1990s. Hmm. And so it's relatively new. And I went back to school and started in about 2007. So it had only been around a short time. Wow. And just new breakthroughs were coming up around at that moment. Hmm. But I also realized after I did finished school, I was very burned out. Mm -hmm. 
brand new career and I was just besides myself um, with burnout because I am, I've learned so much about who I am through the strengths and I am such a learner and such an achiever and I am so driven. Mm -hmm. Now I know why, but I'm, that's what caused a lot of that burnout. I didn't know how to care for myself. And so self-care is something new. It's a word that I don't care for. So I, I had it differently. So it's more palatable for me um, other than the word self-care. That's interesting. Do you go in, does the, does the strengths come into and, the book? Do you want to tell us a little bit about your book and how, how does it flow and how do strengths move into it? What's, why don't we just go there? Tell us about creative presence. The, what is it? Okay. Well, let me, okay, so creative presence. So the strengths come in later for me and it's really not a part of the book, except okay. that, that I do explain that I have been driven for so long. Mm -hmm. And the book actually was, I, I wrote that as, started out as my dissertation. And really, I did not choose the subject to start with. And so I was started down a different path. And I realized this was speaking to me. Creativity was speaking to me. And I really wanted to understand more about what that does for a person. And because I had experienced so much burnout, or the first thing, being driven, uh, the first thing I would let go of is being create, creative. Mm -hmm. Or I, caught up, I was caught up in busyness. And one of the questions that I would love to ask everyone is, how many conversations have you had lately where someone has not said, I'm too busy, I'm burned out, or stressed? Mm -hmm. When's the last time you've had a conversation that someone hasn't mentioned those things? I totally agree. I feel like every time I go to a party, every time I'm out, how are you? Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so busy. I'm so stressed. You know, but we'll guess, yes. you know, the season will end, right? Like it's just, just now. It's not always. Right. This moment. Yeah. Do you guys agree? But, Please chat, comment. But does it end? Mm -hmm. People have had those conversations. But I noticed that that's all I hear from others is I am so stressed out. I'm so tired. And when will it stop? Mm -hmm. But I've learned it, it doesn't stop. The busyness continues and continues. And there's more of life. Even going through this, this time of, of COVID and being at home during this pandemic, Mm -hmm. People are even more stressed. Yes. Um, they are not only working from home, they're taking care of children, they're schooling their children. There's so much stress. And I learned, especially about myself, some of the first things I let go of when I am stressed is that creative process yes. and or being quiet mm -hmm. because there's always somebody else needing you with, yes. with five little ones somebody always needs you. Mm -hmm. Is that true, Christine? It's very true. I, you know, I, I, we share the same values, obviously. And so I really have to pre-think where I'm going in my day. And as soon as my baby goes to sleep, I beeline it to my self-care because that is my only chance for the entire day to do anything rejuvenating or um, enriching for myself. And if I don't do that, then I'm not my best self for the rest of the day. And so it's, it's hard. And I was talking to some friends about it yesterday. You know, I, I just know my limits are what they are and everybody doesn't have five kids waiting for them at home and have to get dinner on the table and you know, whatever else I have going on. Um, I have my own plate and I have to manage my own plate. And you know, it, it takes, it takes that, you know, for me, it's the think time planner thinking through what I need to do and then getting those routines. And, and when I review my days in the review phase, I'm like, Oh, I blew it again. And I, I wouldn't be exhausted at 5 PM if I took my rest at 12, you know, but yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Um, but it is hard. I, you have to be super strategic and a little bit against the grain, but then the blessings are so rich and so wonderful. And I can connect until the eight or nine o'clock that I need if I pause, you know, so. Yeah. Well, your 
ink time was a godsend for me as I was writing my dissertation because I could literally break down each thing I needed to do. Yeah. And um, I have it in front of me. There's one little piece where I could figure out what I needed and it's in pencil I, because I never want to make a mistake. So I did do it in pencil oh, and then I learned to be color coordinated. Um, but I could break down things. I could actually see what is filling my day or what, what is throwing me off track. And I love that I could do that. And so that's part of self care. No, I'm so glad. That's so great. And I hear all the time <laughs> the Rosebush tool where you can just kind of identify these are my priorities and these are the things that are going to get in the way of those. Over yeah. and over again, I hear that's, that's a lot of people's favorite tool. If you can only do one thing, you have three minutes. A lot of people beeline it straight to the Rosebush. So, was that your favorite tool as you're managing a, your daughter's wedding and dissertation? I mean, I can't, I just, can't even fathom how you did all that but it's amazing it was it was fantastic i i i don't require a lot of sleep but mm -hmm. i do require um time of just filling my soul and that was one of the first things that i let go of like mm -hmm. i had said um and one of the things i learned as i was going through this process of writing I found that I was the quiet place that I had was in the shower. And I thought, what is that? That was the time that I was quiet. And it was amazing. The thoughts that would come. And I realized that I'm not setting aside time to think mm -hmm. because I was busy because I was tired. And I realized at that point that I needed this. And I, I also realized this was my journey, mm -hmm. um, this book that I've written. And so just to catch everyone up, when I say creative presence, creativity for me is using our imaginations, our past experience, and innovation to find solutions to novelty. And our, our brain is wired to look for things that are novel. And um, so if you say you walk in at the end of the day into your home, and all of a sudden you feel like something's out of place, mm. that is our brain looking for that novel that novelty, something that's out of place, that you're used to it being a certain way. And I think we've all had that experience. Hmm. But that, our, that's what our brain looks for. That's fascinating. So, so your topic became a journey then. You didn't set out to write about creativity. Is that, do I understand that correctly? Creativity always intrigued me. So I thought at first that creativity was doing something sort of artsy or um, I like to quilt. And I found that when I did not have that peace in my soul, that I, I, I tended to be the person who would um, re overreact. So mm -hmm. if something happened in life, my reaction would be bigger than, it, than what was warranted. Yes. And that told me I'm not taking care of myself. Do you understand? I do. Have I you ever definitely, definitely, especially I, the season I'm in right now, because I'm in the, I'm, I feel like it's a pressure cooker. My season's a pressure cooker. And so if I don't take care of myself, my reactions are too much. And, and it is a cue. It is a, it is a cue that I need to take care of myself so I can take care of others. Um, so that's an, such an interesting thing. Well, what I'm really picking up on is that the shower was the place where you would have your thinking and your, your, your thoughts that helped you to kind of rise above and then quilting too, because the thing about quilting is it's, it's kind of repetitive. And so what you're allowing yourself to do is it sounds like you were getting that drift thinking. Yes. That time. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so I tend to be, I love to piece. And so I use my sewing machine, but it's something I don't even have to think about. So I can think during that time. Yes. And that for me was missing. So for those who are in the room who don't know all the research and the science behind drift thinking, what it is, why there are insights in the shower, you know, there's a hashtag called hashtag shower thoughts because these are things that, that we connect ideas and, and epiphanies come in the shower because you can't hear anything. Nobody's coming in there and there's no interruption. And it's this, this, um, white noise 
you know, and you can just be alone with your thoughts for a minute. And there are very few places in our world with our phones constantly with us, constantly on that we have that anymore. Um, would you tell everyone what, what did you discover in your research about drift thinking? What is it? What does it do for the brain? What are the results? Yeah. Yes. And, um, so what I had called the, the drift th thinking is creating, um, quiet or okay. cultivating quietness. Okay. And so that the time that I'm, or everyone is able to sit and actually find their thoughts, mm -hmm. which then allows you to, to narrow in on what it is that's needed. And mm -hmm. mindfulness at this time is a big buzzword. Mm -hmm. So is um, having meditation mm -hmm. or, and not one way or another of what I mean by meditation is having that still quiet mind. And we can choose to think on a mantra at that moment, a scripture, um, something positive, mm -hmm. and create and cultivate that time. I think because of the busyness, and I, from my research, all the busyness, all the stress of what it does to our brains, mm -hmm. it keeps us having a, the same loop going over and over and over again, mm -hmm. where our minds, our brains are, they're um, plastic, they, it can change. Okay. And so we are, not, we are resilient. Our, our, at, before the 1990s, the thought was that our brains could not change. Whatever we are born with, that is it. And from nursing, I, I saw that if someone was in an automobile accident, you could see that people can learn again. So someone could say they had an accident and all of a sudden they forgot to talk, how to talk, how to eat, how to walk. And they were, they, there are exercises that would connect the brain by, so the exercises need to cross over the brain. So, and they use the same type of techniques to teach children with reading. So there are reading techniques you can do by doing these exercises to cross the midbrain. Mm -hmm. So from right to left, mm -hmm. and that connects also. So children were learning, and even adults were learning to walk again mm -hmm. after severe brain trauma. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I started picking up on there's, there's something more to this. And yeah. then, like I said, that was backed up in the neuroscience research. But our research is still so young. Yeah. We, we still do not know much about the brain and we're learning more and more. Mm -hmm. That's a really good statement. That's a really, really good statement that we don't know much. Um, I'm going to ask you to dive in on that right brain, left brain um, aspect. That's one of the things that we at think time put forward we have in our process we link right brain thinking and left brain thinking in the planning process and i don't know of anyone else who's doing that it's a little bit innovative um it's it's a different it's a different approach creativity productivity right brain left brain and moving it together that those phases of thinking um tend to i think get the best results is that right I think so also. And as you just said, with think time, you're using not only words, but you're using pictures mm -hmm. and that engages both sides of the brain. Um, with creativity from the research I found, it is both sides of the brain mm -hmm. because with being creative, you take what you have learned, mm -hmm. past experiences, and past knowledge we there's no such thing as a self-made person right. all of our knowledge is based on something we've been taught mm -hmm. so you take that knowledge which that is engaging the that's what we have more on the left side of the brain that that and then in um, engaging that with the right side which is the more creative mm -hmm. so both sides of the brain to do that mm -hmm. um the thing that I have noticed in what I um, research is that not only does it take both sides of the brain because you have to pull up to your mind 
pass knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if I am learning, if I'm quilting, I have to take what I've already learned mm -hmm. and then to engage in something new. Mm -hmm. I, I use that creativity, but I, it's based upon what I already have learned so far that yeah. I'm able to express it. So mm -hmm. that is engaging both sides of the brain. It is not in one specific portion. Okay. That's neat. You know, everything in the world, uh, for some reason I was reflecting on this today, but everything that's ever been created in the world has come from a yes. person who had some type of body of knowledge. And then like you're saying, it's creative if it's novel and it's creative if it has a, yes. solution, if it's a new solution to a problem. Like you say, the yes. out of the box solutions. So yeah, everything in life, you know, from the wheel being invented to Tesla, you know, it's all this journey of what you I love the way you're packaging this. Like you're saying it is this past knowledge and then you add something new and then it's a novel solution. I think that's, that's so simply stated and it just put together all the thoughts I was having that didn't make sense to me earlier. <laughs> I, think I love, so you basically covered what inspired this. This was kind of your journey and you discovered you were observing, which is another very important, very important aspect of being creative is observing, right? Just kind of being mindful and observing what's going on. Um, so are there any other points about the book? I mean, you're, you're, you're saying how, how to discover at rest. Can you talk about that? Like how, how do you discover rest and creativity? How, is it, how do those two connect? Well, rest and creativity, one, um, in our busyness. So one of the things I've encouraged people to do at this point in time, because of the busyness that we're in and because of all the added pressure mm -hmm. of being not only working from home and taking care of children and even homeschooling at this point in time, mm -hmm. is to get outside. That is one of the best steps we can do, it, and it's, it's breathing. I wrote about this in the book. I realized that when I am stressed, I take very, very shallow breaths. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I am not getting as much oxygen to my brain. It, that limits my ability to think. Okay. And so one of the things I do, like I said, is encourage people to get outside, to breathe, and to learn to deep breathe. And we talk about a little bit about that in the book. And when we are able to do that, we're able to be more present in the moment. It helps us to narrow our focus. And another way of being creative outside is to observe where I live. I am just amazed at how many shades of green there are. Had no idea. I live in a very agricultural area. I live near the, the coast and it, it, in the foothills. It floors me how creative God is with all the shades of green. Had no idea. But when I stop and I notice that does something for my brain, it's, it's bringing that joy. That's also what our brain feeds on is joy. And what is it that we can do to think positive thoughts? Because if we continue on that negative thought or a negative pathway, our brain just continues in that same trap. So whatever it's, wherever that, say for lack of a better term, a loop, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing with my hand and I don't even know if you can see me. So wherever on that brain pathway that that is triggered, our brains tend to go through that same wiring each time. So we have to stop it. So to stop it, we need to change that thought, to change that mindset and getting outside and noticing what's around us and, and having that view, you are able to stop those trains of thought. So that's another thing I, can, I encourage people to do. It's creating that quiet. It's noticing what I'm thinking, thinking, excuse me, and then changing it, which we can change our brains. That's awesome. So, so basically what you're recommending is if you're stressed out, which everyone is, <laughs> it's obvious yeah. to be online and see what, where everybody's going. Um, yeah. So people overall right now are pretty stressed out and you're saying just get outside and allow yourself to notice what's around. When you do that, yes. the slowing down allows your brain to have the right chemistry 
to produce calm and rest. And it helps you to break yes. looping thought, yes. anxiety, and stress that continues unless you interact, unless you act on that thought and change the thought, it's going to continue looping. Right. So, so if I stay inside and I'm stressed out, I shouldn't check the next post and keep going for the news. <laughs> no more yeah. scrolling, just go outside. Just go outside. And, and like I said, deep breathing. Um, Navy SEALs, mm -hmm. before they go and they're doing a jump, they practice deep breathing. Okay. okay. It's called four by four breathing. And that is one of the things they do as they're going to enter into a very stress, stressful situation, they breathe first. Good. I think we can all learn from that. So yeah. there's different, there's many different techniques, but that is being creative. It's mm -hmm. stopping in the moment. It's realizing where you are. It's making a choice. Choices are creative because we have numerous choices every day that we can, when we stop and think mm -hmm. about the choices we have, because many of us, as say moms, moms working from home, homeschooling our kids, sometimes we feel like we don't have choices, mm -hmm. but even stopping and realizing that we do have choices, that changes the history of our minds. I love that you just connected that. I, I love that you connected the creativity with what I would, I mean, could you, would you say the science calls that the internal locus of control? Like, I feel like I can impact my life. I can affect my life. And creativity yes. kind of puts you back in that driver's seat saying, I, I have choices. Choices are created. Yeah. I'm, I'm entering into my life, creating as I go. And this opens up avenues for choice, which strengthens my core in a sense to use, you know, like a physical a physical um, analogy, but there's this physical core to yourself. And that's, that's fascinating. I love, I love that insight. Wow. That's really neat. Yes. It, and in creativity, um, like I, I don't, I'm not sure if I mentioned that it's not just doing something artsy. It, it's right. all sorts of creativity. Creativity is taking your colors maybe and doing your think time journal and planning out your, your planner and planning out the day. That is creativity. Mm -hmm. Taking time and making those choices is creativity. Uh, there's, there's many forms mm -hmm. in the brainstorming mm -hmm. is creativity. We do that in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So, or we do it at home as we're planning our meals. That's, mm -hmm. That's brainstorming. That is a choice of creativity. Mm. So there's, there's many different ways to be creative. Mm. So it sounds to me like the brain gets into a healthy place. Ultimately, it reduces stress. It um, finds joy. Mm. It's restful. And it's um, capable. Yes. Significant is what I'm hearing you say. And um, so it's the art of, of bringing these creative, these creative solutions or even just the um, act of trying to find a creative solution or the act of being mindful and aware in a creative way, just kind of noticing. Um, all yes. these are avenues. Um, do you have like a list of avenues of being creative or how, how does that work in the book? How do you, how do you explain it, this multifaceted word? There are um, several different areas. There is mindfulness in the book that I've listed. So there is the act of um, art. There is the act of choice, um, being mindful, uh, creating rest and that quiet, cultivating that quiet. So all these, there's different um, ways of creativity that I've listed. There are also questions with each portion. Um, of creativity so asking you where where are you with that what did you learn what can you do differently uh, what would you like to take away so there's many questions throughout the book I, each little sub chapter has 10 questions to it so it's something that you can take away immediately and apply immediately to your life to see results to see change and to find that mindfulness and creativity or excuse me to find being purposeful 
and to um, improve your relationships because one, you're taking care of you. Uh, it goes back to the analogy every time we fly, which we are not flying right now, and that is to put the mask on your, the oxygen mask on yourself first. Mm -hmm. And I think I've learned so much of that before I can take care of others, I need to take care of me. And what, what is it that I need? Um, but like we've talked about, there, there are those warning signs that come up and that is the, the overreaction or the resentment, um, or I notice what type of thoughts I'm having. Mm. All of those tell me where, where, how I'm doing and caring for myself. Mm. And so all of that is listed in the book. That is great. So, so let's talk about the book itself a little bit more. Is it, is it geared just for anyone who's wanting to have more, more fulfillment in life? Is, is that kind of the big idea or looking for novel solutions? How, who would you say is the ideal person to buy this book? I would say anyone who wants change in their life and, and yeah. has not been able to figure out what is best for them because this the book does not say this is the only way it says that there's many ways to be creative um many things to think about so all of that is in the book um it's i wouldn't it is not real heady for even though it does go into the brain even though it tells a bit about the brain it's something that anyone can understand um i don't tend to use really big words so everything's um broken down where we all can benefit from it yeah. going back and reading through i've learned so much again that it's like oh that's why i'm reacting this way i need to put this into practice what can i do differently mm -hmm. so even i you know even though writing it going back through again I, i've made some other practices in my life to uh be able to engage when my husband gets home to have conversations with my children as they are here during the day. I have a senior in high school and just having, being more present with her. I, I have stories along the way, what I learned as I was writing and how we were disengaging in our relationships. So it's for everyone. That's wonderful. That's one thing we haven't touched on yet is the relationship aspect. That was the last, I think that was the last frontier of this. So you are noticing that as you're more present, you're more calm. It, it does make sense that, that would overflow in not only how you feel in intrapersonally, but it's this interpersonal interaction with someone else. You're more calm, you're happier, you feel capable and you're not trying to prove yourself, I guess, because you feel some, you know, you feel strong. I mean, that, is that kind of the formula for having better relationships? I mean, it sounds kind of idealistic. I don't know. Well, I learned during this time is um, one, because I'm so driven, I, I'm, I'm actually task oriented. And so I know that about myself and I've had to do um, creatively, I've had to make a vision board to mm -hmm. say what's important. So I have that in front of me at all times where I can make decisions. Yes, I want to do that or no, I don't based on what my core values are. Mm -hmm. And that helps me. It, it saves energy mm -hmm. for the end of the day so that I can engage um, with my children or I then will shut down the computer or shut down work so that I am choosing more wisely for myself mm -hmm. to have that energy once again to engage. Mm -hmm. or, so that has helped me. It's helped our relationships. And I think that's made a huge difference, but I wouldn't have known that had I not done it wrong or had I not pushed myself so much like, oh, I can do one more thing. Mm -hmm. But instead I'm making a wiser choice for myself to engage in those relationships. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you got really clear on your yeses. And so when you had yeah. option of one more task or my big yes, it was easier to just say, I choose my big yes. Is that kind of what you're trying to say? Yes, and literally right on my wall that I can see, but it is all in pictures. Mm -hmm. I have right relationships or I have exercise, whatever I have on there, I needed that the photographs to remind me, not just words. You know, it's real fascinating. Um, the creator of mind mapping, Tony Buzan, he, uh, was talking about images and the importance of them. 
So I did some more research to find out more about images after, after listening to Tony. And the brain processes images so fast. It's just lightning speed and immediately. And I love that you've, you've taken the images and you've put them up. Like you don't have to open. Yeah, it's not even the planner. It's, it's not opening the planner. Like if you've drawn it, hopefully it's seared on your mind. But if it's yes. pictured, then it's your brain processes that so fast. And I like to, for a funny analogy, I like to joke about like a budget. You know, you have a, you have a number on a page or you have this really cute shirt right in front of you, which is going to win out. Yeah. For me, the cute shirt, yes. <laughs> gonna win. the number does not say anything to me. The cute shirt, the image of that, that's, that's what I want. And so, you know, I use images to get super clear and that's actually how we ended up getting out of debt when we first got married was I made this visual chart of, you know, I'm trying to build these bricks to finish yes. our debt payoff. And that, was the wildest thing it was a, it was one that was a pre-think time experience for me where i realized wow i need to see visually what i'm headed toward and that really motivates me toward action um that's really fascinating so so i feel like you're touching on the questions like i was going to ask like you talked about how this has impacted you personally you are an overachieving person you love to check off tasks so much so that you would drive yourself into the ground you don't even think you need sleep I mean, you're just going to get it done, but you've been through hard seasons where you've seen the depth of life. You've also burnt yourself out. You felt what that's like. You don't want that again. Yes. And it seems like these are, this is getting the solution. These are the solutions for you. Um, do you want to say anything else on burnout? I, I feel like that's a passion point for you and something you've seen in the medical field specifically. Um, did you have anything you'd like to say that you haven't said about burnout and, and how people can help themselves prevent that? First of all, I'd say you matter, mm -hmm. you're significant. And in the book, I, I've heard this analogy. I looked for where it actually started and I'm not sure, but God created us to be human beings and not human doings. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that over and over again. And it's so true. And I get caught in the doing trap. And I think right now our medical professionals are caught in the doing because they're thinking, I don't want to bring this home or I'm staying at work and I'm trying to rest here. And so they're not fully rested. And I, I just want to say, you matter. I want to say that to everyone. You matter. You're significant because of who you are mm -hmm. and it's not what you do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that is one of the traps that we buy into. It's the trap I bought into and it, it caused a lot of burnout it caused a lot of stress and it hurt my family and my relationships mm -hmm. because i was so busy doing and i just wanted to say to someone you matter you have significance and i think that is my heart's cry that i could share that with someone else so that they can say i matter i can take care of myself mm -hmm. and i can find what it is that i need mm -hmm. That's awesome. It sounds like the medical professionals may already have clarity around the people they're caring for, would you say? And then forget to apply that same care perhaps to themselves. Yes. Like they've got a lot of clarity on this, the person in front of me, my patient matters, but oh yeah, me too. That's, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, well, we are, you guys, we, this has flown. Um, we are coming close to the end for you guys in the room and you guys on Facebook. Um, if you have any questions as we finish up this conversation, go ahead and put them in the chat. Okay. So Alicia says this was so good. <laughs> Dr. Rader, this has been such an honor, um, to just be able to listen to you. I, you told me you were doing a dissertation on this and I was just like, Oh, what have you found out? <laughs> I just I would love, I'm in such a different season, um, you know, chasing five kids around and you know, doing a dissertation and going deep into the research in the library just sounds like heaven. <laughs> you know, not everyone thinks of that as just heavenly, but that's kind of my, my wiring is like, Ooh, a library. Um, but I, 
I just am so thankful that you shared this depth and, and not only from an academic standpoint, but also uh, from a standpoint of just, you know, you've been personally impacted by it and you want to share it because you get it, you get it fully, you get burnout, you get the depth of life and loss and you get the, you get the, the importance and the urgency of, of really soaking up relationships because you have lost and you know um, what it means to be present and how important that is for the long haul. Um, yes, Carrie says, thank you so much. And she says, so glad I'm not feeling, I'm not alone and feeling overwhelmed and wanting to prioritize taking care of herself so she can be a better mom. Yes, that is if you can keep that awareness and that okayness of it's okay to take care of yourself in this, especially right now, um, it, it's such a gift and it's so wonderful to have someone who studied it professionally and give you the okay to say, yes, take care of yourself because you will be better able to, you know, live on purpose, feel joy, be confident, be capable, relate to others. I mean, you just covered so much in, and I am dying to read this book so it sounds like this is coming out early july is that right it's Almost early ready. july it's coming out okay yes and i wanted to offer which i don't um if i could um i have a gift if someone wants to text i have a text to um my website okay. and i'd like to offer for everyone um five tips to cultivate quiet nice okay I'm ready. What's the text number? Okay. So it's the text number is 22828. Okay. And you text um, E, E is an echo, B is in Bravo, coaching. So EB, my initials, coaching. And if you send that in, and then this um, tomorrow, I will send out five tips to cultivate quiet. And I would be glad to get that to you. I think I going back through and just rereading and putting those things into practice has been a life changer for me. I cannot wait to get this. I'm entering it right now. Did you guys all pick that up? The number is 22828. So text EB coaching and it's one word, no space to 22828 EB for Aaron Bader coaching. And then you just reply with your email address. I'm doing it right now, guys. And you guys are as well. And I will get that out to you. Okay. I can't wait to receive that. That sounds awesome. So if people are watching this video, if they want to have a creative life coach to help them go deeper, to experience this confidence and joy and significance and freedom, um, how do they get in touch with you? What's the best way? So the best way you can email me and it's Aaron at AaronBaderCoaching.com. Okay. And your website is AaronBader.com, right? Yes, it is. E-R-I-N-B-A-D-E-R.com. And then the website is AaronBader.com. And the book is Creative Presence and it's coming out July, 2020. So yes. look for that um, on, where should they look for that? On your website? It'll be on the website. It's also going to be on Amazon. And then there'll be also the Kindle version on Amazon. Yes. Awesome. That's great. So look for Creative Presence July 2020 on Amazon and on AaronBader.com. And it will be available on the Kindle version as well. So this is exciting. I cannot wait to read that book. I'll be the first person to purchase. I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, everybody.